this is the y-axis here. I've got full left and right, and I can basically control this guy and I can move him anywhere I want. All right, welcome back to another do it wrong yourself video here. Uh, I've fully designed this mechatronic eye mechanism. I'm finally filming the video. I'm gonna show you this eye mechanism. I'm gonna wake him up here and you can see that I've got full up and down. So this is the y-axis here. I've got full left and right and I can basically control this guy and I can move him anywhere I want. I've got a little blink uh, in here so I can blink pretty quick here. I can blink twice. He can blink while he's moving. I've got a little couple of pre-programmed actions in here. For example, we can do a little bit of skeptic. And if you're bored on YouTube, well, you can put him right to sleep. So this is kind of a few of the pre-programmed actions I've got in here. I'm gonna wake him up here, and then we're gonna do his little uh, surprise action. Then I've got one last one here that I'll just kind of put in here while I'm talking, which is I call gaze mode. So in gaze mode, he kind of just randomly looks around and randomly does a few blinks. I'm still working out the spacing here on the eyelids in this. And everything is custom designed. All of the parts are 3D printed, and all of the code is running on a Raspberry Pi in Python and uh, most of the code was written by AI. I mean, who doesn't write code with AI these days? So that's kind of how everything's working. I'm gonna show you in detail how I 3D modeled this, how I made it, and kind of the journey of what got me here and where I'm planning on going in the future. So plan A, uh, you can see here, there was lots of plans. <laughs> plan A, B, C, D, E, F, G, F, 3D printed, lots and lots of parts. And my initial plan was to actually use these little uh, buckle joints. It rotates in two axes, so it rotates this way, and it also rotates up and down. And I thought it's a little eyeball like this with concave where my eyeball was gonna go. And then this just simply would snap into there. And then I could move the eye up and down like this. I could move the eye left and right like this. Kind of see when I come all the way over and then down, I can't go up and down right here. So it was a no-go. Anyway, uh, bigger ones, I think maybe I'd get a little bit more range of motion. I was gonna drill out the hole here and anyway. So I went down that road for a while, didn't work. Eventually I landed on the design I have right now, which is a two part design. The way I've designed this is I designed the eyeball. This is just a 3D printed eyeball as well. It's just regular old PLA, honestly, in white. Um, and I kind of modeled this up that an insert can go inside of it. And I think it's quite ingenious, but this is the way the eyeball looks. You just print your piece of paper, you put it in there, you do a little silicon pour, or a, a rather a lacquer pour, something like that to make the little eyeball part there. And then the genius here is this little part right here. So I made these so that the eyeballs can be removable from the mechanism in case you need to swap them out. But this guy just kind of sits like this and then it snaps down in and then pop and it snaps right in. So there's your eye mechanism. And then this is your little, uh, where your little wires hook into and little screws. And then you're off to the races. So that's the basis of my mechanism. The current version that's actually in these eyeballs right here is slightly different than this. This is kind of one of my earlier prototypes. The part that I wanted to not wear out, I made out of these little, I think they're little brass rods, and I just drilled holes through them. And then, you know, one kind of slides in at the top and one slides in here in this plane, right? So there's two little brass rods. And then those can articulate this way for one plane. And then, of course, they articulate like this for the other plane. I can just pop that out, remove the eyes, pop a new set of eyes back in. And the cool thing here is that you don't need any sort of bracing on the back because the actual eyeball itself serves as the backing to keep everything, keep these little rods in place. You can see I 3D model this. It's hard to see on camera, but it's actually flat right there and flat right there. So as those little rods are sitting there inside of like that, they just spin. Anyway, so the eyeball itself essentially holds everything in place when you snap it on. All right, so this is the way the eyelids work. Uh, they sort of look like this. They're in these two halves. They kind of go like this and in and out. And you can kind of see the top eyelid goes down and the bottom eyelid's on the other side, but it goes across. So let me do a little blink here. You can kind of see how that works. And then as you track, you can kind of see them working in tandem, the left and right. And then there's the left and right this way. So uh, that's how it works. Let's take a look at the 3D model. All right, so you can see here, this is the full 3D model in this little exploded view. So you can kind of see all the parts independently of one another. There's the front and bottom eyelid, or the top and bottom rather at the front of the eye. 
And then here we have the actual eyeball. Again, this is just a full 3D printed eyeball here with a little concave thing on the front so you can put your iris in there. And a few little extra features like these little kind of teeny tiny hooks right here that allow it to snap around the back. I mentioned this is slightly different than the one I did in the video. This is my final version. And then we have that little inner mechanism here with this part right here is going to be metal and this part right here is going to be metal. Those are the only two metal parts. However, you could 3D print those and just make them out of plastic as well. It would work almost probably exactly the same. Um, I wanted to make those out of metal because I knew those would be the moving parts and take the most wear and I didn't want it to wear out. So uh, then there's this little inner piece right here. This little section right here, this front half right here is uh, where the eye mechanism hooks onto and you can kind of see how the rest goes together there. So this is kind of the exploded view. You can see when everything comes back in, that's how compact it is and that's how everything would sort of sit together. I'm super happy with it. So that's kind of the way that it works. Uh, when you 3D print this, it actually comes out in just several parts here. You can see there's kind of this base body and it's done in two halves here. Let me turn off these little uh, bars here, but we have the little eye holder at the front that just prints and then we have the little base down here where all the servos sort of mount into. That's the servo mounting base. And then the last thing is just this little servo holder at the back that just helps mount these back two servos so they don't rock left and right when they do their movement. So there's three parts there, whoops. Three parts for the uh, mounting mechanism. And then the eyeball is made up of kind of several different parts. But there's the top eyelid, bottom eyelid, eyeball itself and then inner eyeball mechanism that the eyeball clips onto, as I showed earlier. And again, these two parts right here are metal. So all of the eye movement is actually done on my little controller here. So this is just a regular Bluetooth controller, and right now it's paired over here to the Raspberry Pi, which is hiding back here. There's a little Raspberry Pi computer, and there's some of the electronics. I'll show you this in a second. And uh, all my code here is running on the in Python and the Raspberry Pi here, and you can see that I've paired a Bluetooth joystick, so I can actually use the joystick sticks here to control all of the movement. There's kind of some fancy code in here. You can probably see how realistic the eyelid movements are. So as he tracks down and up, the eyelids move more or less, depending on where he's looking. So that's some fancy code, because I wanted to make this essentially as realistic as possible. And then I have mapped, sorry, I'm trying to do this with one hand. I've mapped my blink here to just the A action. You can see how quick that is. And then these buttons just kind of do some little random things. So there's kind of the squint and uh, what else do I got here over here? There's his little go to sleep mechanism there on Y. And a few other little actions I plan on adding a blink as well. So really fun here because you can kind of control everything wirelessly and kind of make them look wherever you want. Eventually, what I want to do is I'm going to, of course, uh, <laughs> my plan one was to actually pair cameras inside each of the pupils, um, but that'll maybe be for the future. So eventually, I'll probably just add a camera here. So he's actually going to be able to track you. So as you move around the room, the eyes will kind of track with you and look at you as if you're having a conversation, right? With him, he'll kind of track you like this and talk to you. And I eventually want to build in some AI for whisper and some of these things. So he'll actually be able to talk and do some realistic gestures and things like that. So one of the design considerations I had was I wanted to make this human scale. And uh, you'll see that the actual eyes here, you guys notice an uncanny resemblance in the eyes. They're actually my eyeballs. So uh, another little cool feature here is you can see on the side, see all those little veins in the eyes. So we kind of have these kind of realistic looking little eyes. Um, and they are actually built from just paper. So I actually just literally took a picture of my eyeballs, took them into Photoshop, did some color correction there, printed out a few sizes, and then made my eyes with them. So it's been quite a journey getting here. Let me show you how some of the mechanisms work here on the back. So you can see the way I've designed this is there is four motors per eye. Each individual eye unit is independent. So you could just create a single eye unit. It's about that wide and goes all the way down. And it's extremely compact. One of the other design considerations I had is I didn't want to do any fancy wire bending or all these crazy routes that I've seen on some of these. So each one of these is just a standard servos with standard straight wires. All you have to do is just snip them. It's amazingly compact. And I wanted to go with four servos per eye, which allows me to independently control the X and Y of each eye. And then the upper eyelid and bottom eyelid are independently controlled as well. And this will allow me to do like a blink. So the right eye can blink and the left eye can blink independent of one another. So this is kind of how the mechanism looks from behind. 
I'll show you here and move this around. You can see it's kind of complicated inside of there. And it took me quite a minute to get there. I'll show you some of my prototypes and kind of how all this moves. Look at all that beautiful movement inside of there. And the best part is almost all of this is just 3D printed. So there's only one or two little pieces that I did 3D print. And I'll show you how I made that work. So let's take a look. So another one of my attempts was actually to use the, these little horns right here. You can see I bought a whole slew of these little guys and I was initially going to use these to either hook to the servos or to actually go inside of the eye. And you can see these are these little ball joints and they have quite a bit of movement. I can do my X and Y and I can do a full range of motion here and it's actually pretty good. The only problem is they're just a little bit too big. I would have had to have two of these inside of my eyeball like this. And I actually designed a version where I was able to squeeze two of them in, one kind of way up here and then one kind of over here. I think I had, I can't exactly remember. And it kind of worked. It was just so tight that it just didn't give me the full motion. So uh, I bought so many screws. I mean, I bought little teeny tiny screws and broke so many of these bits uh, to drill these. I even bought littler teeny tiny drill bits and screws. I mean, these things are just getting so fine. And I even bought like microscopic ones like look at these guys so super teeny tiny to drill some of my holes and uh, that was kind of the one of the most challenging parts was because I wanted my inner rails like I showed in this part to be made out of metal and spin in order to drill these holes perfectly center that was one of the more challenging parts so the way I actually did that is I bought these little uh, brass rods and um, then I modeled up this little jig so that I could drill straight holes so this is kind of ingenious, but the way this works is you basically, you know, you have your piece that you want to drill and it's just going to go in one of these like so all the way through. And then what you do here is you get like another little piece like this. So let's say my hole is going to go right through the middle of that. You just put this in perpendicular like that. And you can see kind of how that's looking there, right? Anyway, and then you just drill right down the center of this. It's kind of a little marked there, but there is a hole there. So you just drill straight down in the center of this actual metal rod, and eventually you'll pop out the bottom here. And then you'll have a perfectly drilled hole right through this rod in the center. And that's how I did that. So anyway, this little jig was really helpful for doing those sort of things too. While the eye mechanism is incredibly cool, that wasn't initially my plan. Uh, my first plan is actually to create a silicone mask of my face. So you can kind of see here's my first version and then eventually add in the eyes. So method one was actually going to be create this mask first and then create artificial movements for the facial muscles to do expression. I sort of came up with this idea that I thought I could make realistic impressions after I saw a little video here. And I uh, thought I'd give it a shot myself. And in the meantime, I started then researching the eye movement and that kind of uh, diverged me from my plan. I ended up full 3D printing. So this will probably come out in a future video on how to do this, but I 3D printed a version of myself. I'm gonna call this Android 2.0. Eventually he'll probably just take over the channel and do all the videos. Uh, but the goal was initially to create the face mask. That sort of got sidelined as I got a little bit sidetracked here in the eye mechanism and building that out first. So stay tuned uh, if you wanna watch the progress here as I build my full uh, digital clone, Andrew 2.0, we'll call him. So 2.0, did I spend way too much time on you? Hey, oh yeah, yeah, that's what I thought.